about the Bronx and Queens where I started uh, or became known also as a training for espionage yeah uh, Richard Nixon entertained Josip Broz Tito with idea that the whole thing is just a training for the espionage let me explain for this Uh, these are the girls that have actually seen me growing up since I was a baby. Uh, you see this here? The Bronx, New York. Jennifer Lopez and... Well, there you go. Mar Mariah, Maria, Maria Carey, Huntington, New York, and so where the hell is the Huntington, New York? Let me see that. She was not uh, so close, uh, but this was her Illuminati girlfriend, and I would have to walk with her. So I suppose to Maria Carey, it was be like something she's going to come and something like that. I don't know. She made me walk. So the biggest connection of mine is a Jennifer Lopez when it comes to a girls in Bronx, New York. Uh, I never understood why um, Jennifer Lopez was so interested in my case. I never understood any of that stuff. Now I understand. I recall the whole thing. This here is, what is this here? Is this New York? Yeah, it's in New York, it's just not so... So... This here, directions... Bronx... So that's Bronx. So it's not so close, you know? It's like 30 to... 14 hours to go walk was a little bit too much but the Jennifer Lopez made me walk and they would bring her the parents whatever they would bring her so yeah that's me uh, basically a baby that was a year and a half old when it started a career like this let me demonstrate you what that looked like uh, let's go for that matter. Let's go to the Bronx for that matter. No, I did not uh, this place here. This uh, Huntington. We didn't do anything in Huntington. H Huntington came in consideration because of Mariah when I was already grown up and uh, her parents. Uh, or at least the people that she had a strong connection with is some white people uh, it was different uh, some educated folks and stuff like this I was uh, crazy about this one here about a Mariah this one this one was uh, this one this this was the one that was driving me crazy when I was a baby not quite baby she didn't come on the picture so early she came on a picture she didn't come in a picture as early as Jennifer Jennifer was on a picture earlier a few years earlier and this go like to the really early age huh okay um, Bronx let's go to Bronx 
Um, Jennifer uh, Lopez, her situation when compared to Mariah Carey, uh, she was poor. She was with a poor uh, background. But Mariah Carey, for whatever reason, she had, I don't know, she had a strong support from some white people, whatever. Um, so, Bronx, let's see this. Let's see a typical Bronx. Let's see this here. Yeah. Well, no, this is, this is, uh, this is Bronx, sure, but let me see something else. I was, uh, whatever the war zone was. That's what I was. You would find me something uh, like this here. Typically, like, let me see this here. You would find me like this. You would find me on a... You see these tall buildings like this? You would find me somewhere... Let's see, I can get in here. No, shit. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, I don't know. They would have me inside of the buildings with the stairways, and on the stairways inside of the building, uh, I would be right on the stairways, and in apartment next door. To this stairways in one of the apartments, there will be there will be a Richard Nixon with FBI police, um, and they will also have people in the area. And typically, the setup would involve um, me playing on a stairways. And I know this stuff might sound insane to you. Uh, what I found the craziest about this stuff was that Richard Nixon was trying to convince Ronald Reagan. Uh, not really. He was trying to convince me. But he acted like he was going to impress Ronald Reagan with me. Saying to one that uh, he already had me work with the microphones in my ears. It no crazy part was that he is he told him this that sometimes like at the age four or something like that that's totally wrong information because I had microphones in my ears all along. Uh, when I was a baby, I worked literally with the central intelligence FBI microphones in my ears, they put the microphones in my ears. Literally with the microphones in my ears, I worked. And so... People that would talk to me on the microphones would give me instruction what to do with the people when they were going past me and stuff. And it was all kinds of shit. Uh, why would anybody bother with this shit? Why would... This was a strange, strange stuff, because for one thing, as they, they, they told me, I am not black and I'm not white. Uh, they told me the blacks. In Bronx, this was about black and white. Queens, Bronx, if you were not black, you were white. If you were not white, you were black. Uh, they figure out that I'm not black and that I'm not white. And because everybody in Bronx and everybody in Queens knew what MK Ultra is, I don't know about these folks today, but in early 1970s, every, everybody knew what MK Ultra is. At least I had a feeling like that. Uh, and there might be some people that did not know. And there were some people who had all kinds of uh, mental issues and there was also gangsters 
that also might have not known whatever wherever it was so my job was practically involved in all kinds of tensions and the ratio and the gangsters and mentally ill people that you would encounter on the street and once those would commit crime they would just pack them up basically one way or the other you know or if they would they try to do something to me or whatever it would be they they would just come and they would take them away simple as this uh, so I didn't finish why was this since I stated that everybody on Queens and Bronx knew about MK Ultra, a lot of people knew about it. Uh, the people that I interacted, black people also inside of the apartment buildings and uh, or at the stairways outside at the entrance, if they would have me at the stairways at the entrance, that would be like a holiday for me. The worst was inside of the dark, uh, basically those hallways and shit and sitting on those stairways and have some totally sick people going past me and bumping to me and stuff if I went on the stairways that was like a holiday man and so um, that means that the black people itself not everybody was involved in crime and uh, they worked together with the FBI, with the CIA, with the government, with the federal government so they, they had their informants um, there must be a family in Bronx or Queens, I don't know uh, not only one they must have a few of these babysitters, black babysitters that ladies that they would take care of me when uh, they would deliver me there uh, I would be like I'm with them like they're taking care which it didn't make any fucking sense because it was totally black neighborhood and this baby over there um, with other language skills and you know just really really weird situation and that's exactly what they were looking for so I anticipate it was they were trying to do their best to present this in a form of, you know, to the Osip Brostito and to the Soviet Union, which also I was, must say, also thought that we would do this stuff to appeal to the Russia and to the Osip Brostito and so on, and that I had to help them. So I was doing my shit, basically. This is what I was doing at Bronx, at Queens. That's what I was doing in Baltimore, but Baltimore was so violent that, forget it, man, that was just uh, crazy, that was just totally crazy. Um, I had a mailman, the mail guy, uh, who always uh, wanted to fight me. Uh, I had the whole Bronx and Queens got to know me over the course of the time. Uh, I was in the most dangerous areas, areas that were dangerous for the black people. If you were white, you probably would not get out alive where I was at. But this was because the black people accepted me uh, in a such a way, and they did make themselves clear that they don't want any white people there. Uh, they didn't want any other people there. Uh, they would allow police, however, from Yugoslavia to uh, to be near me, too. Uh, but they made themselves clear that they don't want any white people in their neighborhoods and stuff like this. This was so rough. These were uh, like the roughest, roughest neighborhoods that... Richard Nixon was like a child. He was just enjoying this so much that... For me personally, that I spent entire work day on this uh, stairways, entrances and shit, and shit went on day after day, and I had a difficulty to believe that he's still with me, this man. He was persistent, man. He was, he would just stick on some location, whatever location, and 
watch and stick to me like unbelievable they were doing you know they had of course they had also cameras and everything total video surveillance yeah age two with the microphones in my ears uh, at Bronx Queens literally I work for the Central Intelligence Agency this is no joke and so as years went past and uh, I was growing up, uh, I got to meet all the people from Bronx, from Queens, including Mike Tyson, including absolutely everybody that you see, if you see this from the Bronx, from the Queens, uh, absolutely everybody got involved in this case, there was nobody that would not know about me, uh, except myself. Now, uh, this was extremely intense, this stuff. Uh, it was brutal. Um, it was a lot of physical violence, all kinds of stuff, terror, death threats involved. Um, I don't know what uh, the hell. I think uh, maybe that's the kind of school that you get for the spy or something. I don't know. Uh, Mike Tyson back in the day is Mike Tyson Tyson oh, is so much older than myself six years older than myself Mike Tyson got to know me quite early and he's never gonna tell the truth because he's ashamed for one thing um, he uh, when he was a young kid yeah I mean till he got a trainer till he got a trainer he couldn't do anything about it. He is uh, 40 years older than myself. Till he got a trainer, he couldn't do anything about it. Uh, I remember the male guy. It was a rough guy, black guy. And he always gave impression like, uh, like he's rough and so on. He, he was rough. It was a male guy, U.S. Postal Service guy. And uh, he always took time to wrestle with me a little bit, to give me some slap and so on. Um, I don't know, maybe he was hardening me. He knew I was on MK Ultra, But it was situations that adults were the most violent not kids and they were taking great advantage of me and as I was growing up finally I grew up enough you know to take on one by one you know and every time when I returned one time I remember one guy he said damn and the last time I saw you you were much smaller <laughs> uh, and entire Bronx and Queens, they, they were a little bit crazy, these people. They, they got attached to me and uh, they started to... And this shit was so intense. It was all kinds of stuff that went on. Fights, all kinds of stuff, man. Um, now, I'm, I'm about myself, and I always took a bitter end. I learned early that when it's such a big crowd and stuff like this, that anyhow, there is nothing you can do about. It's better to just let whatever, you know, go past. You know, this, this is a very, very bad stuff, because I think it, a lot of people would just, uh, it would affect them severely and uh, in life 
they probably and it's also how I feel about this whole thing in a way Bronx really didn't want me to come back but in a way they did want me to come back so now the truth is that either way they wanted I kept coming back and there was time in Bronx and Queens and and so on and so forth yeah, there was time when you know I grew up and uh, I, I was just growing up and stronger and stronger bigger and bigger and the time came when the history of handling me physically was past me um, Bronx and Queens realized that they knew that that uh, days when uh, you know you could do anything with me uh, were over with. There won't be any chances that, like they used to be in the past to take advantage and do with me whatever you wanted. Uh, and basically, for me. That was the time when uh, Bronx and Queens wanted to get sold. Now, what I exactly mean by this is that uh, all of a sudden, you know, uh, it was it was really really strange and funny and so 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 then weird, you know, because these people were so tough with me. I remember kids, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they were so tough with me that they even had to fake that uh, that I did something to them so that I would not lose. Uh, they did fake. They had to fake. They even had to fake. Uh, so I wouldn't lose interest completely and in Bronx and in Queens and everything, you know, so that I would somehow come back. It was really, really bad. Uh, and then it was a time when I grew up and they notice that they are big and they know that those days are over when they could do anything they wanted to do with me so what they did instead was that's interesting that was a very very smart move the way they it would you know it was a black neighborhood and all this but people did not it was extremely strong community maybe this community that that Bronx and Queens was stronger than the communities in other parts in, in the United States, which rather kind of a sound maybe crazy to you, but their community was extremely strong because everybody knew everybody, every kid, uh, adults knew kids, adults and adults knew kids, everybody knew where you're from, you know, what house, who is your parent and so on, you know. And uh, I remember the playgrounds, they had some, uh, yeah, I didn't go over this stuff, but uh, they started to offer me the best of the Bronx and of the Queens, the best of the New York they started to offer me. And it was Jennifer Lopez and it was uh, Mariah Carey that eventually uh, expressed interest in me. The parents from Mariah Carey, uh, those are Hispanic people. Uh, I think he like a mixed race, but they had to give up on a Mariah once she reached age 12. Uh, a Mariah uh, was just, uh, how can I say, uh, she, well, you see, she's three years old, older than myself, so I was probably age nine or something, and uh, it was this white, uh, educated people, I had no idea, a couple, I don't know who these people were, uh, he had some kind of university, some kind of engineer or whatever, very nice people, 
And what they would do is they, they started to take care of her. Uh, literally, obviously, I don't know, uh, financially assisted her. And they also have, um, you know, promoted her into in her personality so that she would be like, well, you see how it is. I mean, it's like a little queen, right? So, um, so they, they offered me the best. They offered me, truly, they offered me Mariah Carey. And they offered me, I think I was like, yeah, I don't know, maybe 16, 17, something like this, 18. And the thing is that I was angry because of what went on. And I really wanted badly to get back at Queen's in Bronx, I was really, really angry about it because <laughs> the violence was so rampant, it was so crazy that nothing really compared to the Queens and Bronx and so on. Uh, whatever in the world I was, nothing really compared to it. And the resentment was deep. My resentment became racial resentment. In, in other words, I did not want to date Jennifer and I did not want to date Maria, Mariah. I didn't want to date them because they were from that neighborhood. I didn't want to date them because they were part of it. They were part of Queens, part of New York. Uh, I didn't want to date them because of my own racial, ethnic background, European background. And because it was plenty German and Scandinavian and British and all kinds of girls, I neglected, I neglected, I consciously neglected. And Jennifer Lopez and Mariah Carey, I plain and simple rejected. I didn't want to have anything to do with it because it was a time like, and they talked to me about, are they going to help me out? This is going to be a career for me. I don't know what and so on. And that is a girls and so on for me and this and that. That I am all set and this and that. I simply did not want to have anything to do with it. Well, uh, Donald Trump was the one who told me, you're going to be so sorry for it. Uh, Queens and Bronx, they have a great soul, they have a soul, but you have no soul, you don't deserve it. This was Donald Trump, and my age at the time was 17. He promised me he's gonna fuck me. Just so that you understand what exactly, how all that stuff went on. Uh, that's basically how the stuff developed. I never understood why the two girls, Mariah Carey and Jennifer Lopez, continued to hang around even as I grew up and I became obnoxiously fat. Um, for my standards, totally unacceptable. <laughs> I started in the same way to live life like the one I experienced during MK Ultra. If you remember when I mentioned to you that I just had to let the time go by. Because during MK Ultra, there's nothing you can do. If you revolt, you can get killed, like in a split of a second, or hurt, whatever. You're never gonna get back on anyone when you are drugged up. Uh, and if you do try to get back at one, uh, they accuse you of attacking person. And you are mentally ill. You are schizophrenic after all. Yeah, that's what that's what they threatened all the time. If you're going to approach to anybody that does to you and so on, you're dead. You know, it was a reality. It was a reality. So, uh, this, this are few, really few connections from my childhood, early childhood, I, I should say. Uh, but the thing is that uh, um, Jennifer Lopez met um, Mariah Carey when um, 
supposedly that's what she told me. She told me like, like obviously that she's like what, like three years younger. I mean, older than myself. So you know, she's like fifty-five and I'm fifty-two still. And um, that must have been then that I was eight years old when she told me that she's got something, someone really, really important to meet. And that would be a Mariah Carey. Um, not really. I don't believe so. Mariah Carey already met her also before. But this was the strongest connection of them all was Jennifer Lopez. This was like my soulmate. Jennifer Lopez. My MK Ultra soulmate. This one knows me since I was a baby. This This one goes, I don't know, to what... I don't know when she saw me, how old I was. I mean, I didn't uh, register. I know I would say that at four years of my age, for sure. But it might have been earlier. You know, keep in mind, I was subjected to MK Ultra and drugged up. And she was not. She's older, also three, three years than myself. So who knows when. But at age four... Uh, she was already involved in this stuff, this little girl. Uh, and so, um, I, uh, how can I say, uh, I never got, I, ne I never really understood why they would want to hang around me, these girls, you know, when I already got older and, you know, nothing really worked out in my life, you know. Uh, so now I understand it's a reasonable thing, you know. In the United States of America, you know, the system in the United States of America is designed to basically... Uh, it's like you would try to domesticate a wild Mustang or something like that, you know, uh, and, you know, you let them, you know, jump around and this and that, and then you just put, uh, you know, you know, put the rope around his neck and you, you know, you let him go crazy, you know, jump around and gets tired and that's it, you know. Um, but my memories, uh, they ran deep. The resentments, the character that I had is very, very different character. It's, uh, yeah, my kids, my uh, school kids, schoolmates claim that I have a character that, uh, that I never forgive somebody when somebody does that. Uh, something they teach us in the school that this is not the right thing to do, but, you know, the truth is that this is all about extermination. This is about the genocide. This is about something wrong with my character. You know, the fact of the matter is that for half of the percent of what was done to me, somebody else would pull the guns out and kill people, go on a rampage, something we see happened already. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that people get killed, shot, stabbed all the time because of this kind of issues, because of the little jokes, because of little something that happens that you do to somebody, just, you know, you just put the hair, you bent one, and so, you know, that's you people, that's you, that's average, that's every one of you that does this shit. I wouldn't take no fucking advice over my life from any one of you, because what you did is really cowardly stuff. This isn't the stuff that makes you, that glorifies you in any way. Many of you, in fact, should really be executed for the stuff you did. Because your crime totally equaled the crime of serial killers. Uh, Steven Spielberg explained me, for his movies he used me to traumatize me with Hollywood producers, uh, was precious to him. Because uh, when you kill somebody, he dies once. And you shoot somebody, whatever you do. But under MK Ultra, you can kill him a million times. 
So, in a sense, he totally knew what he was doing, and so other, others also did, and they did this because of the all kinds of racial, ethnic, hatred-related issues I had to hear from, you know, from Equal Employment Opportunity, if it matters, FBI during MKUltra and CIA and so on, and presidents, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they started to tutor me, basically, contrary to the crime they were doing on how to be, I don't know, some kind of a cuckold or something like this. What is this, anyways? That's how they live in the United States of America. Uh, the day comes when they tell you, well, you know, here, you pick up with yourself one of the girls and we're going to open your career and, and so on and so forth. Uh, we just, it's going to be like this, like nothing ever happened. And in my country, in my state, it doesn't work really like this. That's what uh, William J. Burns, whose father worked for Bill Clinton. Yeah, uh, this CIA connection, what became a Central Intelligence Agency connection of mine, uh, William J. Burns, uh, he taunted me whenever meeting with people such as Clintons, Donald Trump, uh, all kinds of people about what do I think who is the closest to uh, to him. You know, Barack Obama and Kamala Harris did not have a connection, direct connection to, uh, to Burns. But quite contrary to it, uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton both did, I should say, Bill Clinton, because it was with Bill Clinton, I would go visit his father, for whom I believe worked in the office. What the fuck he was doing doesn't even matter. Uh, I think that was some kind of a tax, IRS, um, I would say he was attorney, I, maybe a bookkeeper. I had no idea what he was doing. All I know is that we would travel to this building where his father would work. Uh, and torture also went inside of the settings of William J. Burns' father at his workplace. See, there was a fucking racial war that went on inside in there. Um, with the only person that was left to me who was on my side that was a father of William J. Burns. So you understand why and how, yeah, you get it. Uh, the whole lot of burning, the whole lot of damage, a whole lot of bad stuff. Let me see if I can get, let me see if I can get uh, a, uh, they told me who do I think is closest actually Burns did asking about who do I think he's gonna go with uh, is closest to the one uh, where is gonna be with the elections right I told you these elections are who do you, who is more who is more credible today who is more credible is the US government more credible or am I credible is it the stuff that you see on my website more credible than you read in a media or is it in a media that you read that you watch this propaganda this elections and all that stuff more credible than i am who is more credible today uh burns taunted me with whom he will go in the future with and so on um he taunted me in front of trump he taunted me in front of Clintons. And then finally they came all together. Clintons and Donald Trump claiming me all together. They're actors. They're only actors during MKUltra. That they only are actors. Uh, I am not quite, uh, I don't quite subscribe myself to that point of view. Uh, but in an in a, in a abstract view, yeah, I would say, yeah, I mean, yeah, I can agree to that. I can agree to that, but I would not go with a public statement that they are actors, if you understand me what I'm saying. Um, 
Enough said. I give you the information about about. Uh, no, I don't even know what else are they gonna say. Oh yeah, I wanted to see. I wanted to see. Uh, Mike Tyson got a trainer, and then I was fucked. He was a rough kid, and he was older than myself. Uh, he was always strong, but uh, it was time when he was not enough strong. He did get a trainer, and then it was something completely different. I need to see this kind of stuff. Oh, there you go. I thought so. I never Googled this, you know, so just that you know. A lot of photos from Josip Broz Tito and uh, Richard Nixon, as you see. Uh, Josip Broz Tito didn't like any of these people. But the thing about it is that uh, the closest that he liked, he did like, uh, he did came to, to Nixon. Uh, the program that is written here about the Nixon that fall apart in 1974, that's, I'm going to give you right now, I'm going to give you an estimation. Basically, the stuff that I witnessed to you about is so factual that uh, nobody can argue with me. Nobody can disagree with it. It uh, was 1974 that we have seen earlier. One nine seven and four. Come on, where is it now? Here, right here, the top. It should be nineteen seventy one and uh, nineteen seventy four, right? So, yeah, uh, there was some kind of experimentation. It talked about. Uh, oh. The experimentation, limited hell, 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 hell. Uh, goodness, they didn't go and, and screw me up the the Wikipedia, that day. I'm gonna copy paste this article. So in case that they're gonna go and uh, play with it, change whatever. Um, that should be 1974, 1971, 1974, uh, stuff that I noticed earlier. Oh no, that was not under Ronald Dragon, that was, that was truly under, oh, okay. 1971 public papers of the presidents uh, da, da. where the hell is that now hey uh, is this is right there 1971 and all right so is it is it written under the Ronald Reagan let's see that here I would go visit both and Ronald Reagan and oh yeah huh. I did not met I did not met Ronald Reagan through the Richard Nixon somebody's not gonna be wrongly opinionated about that stuff no 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 sir uh, I did not met uh, Richard Nixon was trying to make an impression that suggest an experiment or whatever okay Richard Nixon was trying to make an impression on me that I got to know Ronald Reagan through Richard Nixon, through him. No, not at all. I was Ronald Reagan, California, all the fucking time. That actually confuses me. The two are supposedly not, you know, the two supposedly met and got to know each other somehow, but not much in that sense. 
Nah, I don't subscribe to that point of view quite. Those are the words from from Richard Nixon and stuff like this, but I think those are cats that knew each other for a very long time already. I wouldn't even buy that one. You know, there are quite a few reasons why I wouldn't buy that. Uh, but it might be something, you know, that they were trying to get away from it. And it could be well that a recording from the United Nations from 1971, which appears to me, in fact, did exist in the phone call in 1971 already, not as they were trying to... Uh, Mr. Naftali uh, from the museum and stuff like this that, you know, it, it, they presented him like he's going to make me a favor and, and stuff like this. Nobody was making any fucking favors. Uh, nobody's making me any kind of favors. I explained very well exactly what I was used for, what the elites, the presidentials, exactly what they believe they're going to get away with it. And that's much more than a murder. Um, so, uh, the two knew each other quite already for some time and Richard Nixon was really good at, uh, you know, he was, he was a natural born spy. He was just, uh, you know, see a guy completely, you know. He knew psychologically he was uh, he was a manipulator. He he knew about MK Ultra and he told me about he told me about that he spent time even inside of the psychiatric hospitals observing people and stuff. Richard Nixon was no ordinary person. Uh, he studied MK Ultra very closely. This guy that had. MK Ultra University, literally, and maybe the most experienced guy in MK Ultra is a politician. Um, he was trying to convince me all kinds of scenarios about uh, how Ronald Reagan, uh, how you know he got to know one through my case and all kinds of stuff like that. But that is just not. That is just not. True, you re I realized that, that he was also setting up the time blocks, you know, like earlier I suggested how at my age four that he was trying to impress Ronald Reagan about me using microphones. I was good with the fucking microphones already at the age two. You know, I was dangerous. I was much more dangerous than older uh, kids. Uh, they competed me in New York also with other kids. Now, when I when I think about it, there was other kids and uh, I play with other kids and they had a role to bug somebody and it was a kid, they, they kick his ass all over the place. Yo, the stuff, the neighborhoods where I was in, those neighborhoods are fucking bloody. That was rough, man. Uh, the kid that was there that was playing there were other there were they had another two kids those kids were not even drugged up and you see that what Yossi Bros was growing me for and uh, they kicked those kids the kids were older than myself and they were doing as they were told to do and psychologically they didn't know how to approach you know how to approach these dangerous situations that I learned instantly just by watching them as jocked up as I was. I learned from them on behavior, how not to fuck it up, how not to screw it up. And from their mistakes they made, uh, I learned what kind of stuff to do to get around. And even this was a school for espionage to get the maximum as to what was expected of the little gypsies like myself, literally. It was some kind of a gypsy school, espionage school, child that was just... Uh, I started to really understand that picture when I was one year old at 12 months and, you know, I have a, such a look. Uh, I started to get what this, what this was really, really, this whole thing was about.
Mori Povich was involved in this. I don't know if I did properly pronounce his name. Uh, Mauri, Mauri. Yeah, I did. Mauri, Mauri. You say Mauri in in English language, and he dreamed about would have uh, the interview with me because he was doing this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, discovering people that did not know and so you did not know and you did not know and you did not know and you know that kind of stuff that's Mary Povich so you did not know until whatever and so you know th it was always after uh, that kind of stuff he was doing on a TV I remember him watching his TV channel in the US now he was involved in MK Ultra and he dreamed about oh, he's gonna do this stuff with me uh, that's basically once obviously I do all this stuff by myself um, no this is the thing it's not that I did not know I knew all this stuff I would sit in the room or I would be at work or whatever the fuck I would do or would I don't know see some random picture over there from internet with Mariah Carey uh, I should say Jennifer Lopez and uh, you know what good the fuck is it I mean if you know who you are in my case in my case if you know who you are you go into the psychiatric hospital your dream is gonna come not come true but it's gonna come to an end to a very very uh, sharp stop this British Royals talk about that I have to do this and that. Man, I, I tried in 2010. They fucking threw me into the psychiatric hospital. Once I started in 2010, the whole world were insane after me with the idea to get me, fucking lynch me. Completely ripped me apart. It was, it was, it, 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 it became a fucking obsession with idea to destroy me as fast as possible to make sure that I'm not gonna survive it was like United Nations but not United Nations from New York but United Nations you know the nations united in front to fuck me basically I faced the war against the entire world but the thing was that the United Nations front did not know is it wasn't the first time I was a child like this that I stood up when I was in a kindergarten and first and second third whatever grade even going against the whole fucking class if I had enough of the nonsense violence and stuff like this I had to stand up for myself I did so you know this is just something that they should have known that is going to repeat again. It was just something in me that would disallow to be dumped down, beaten down, you know, to the pulp without, you know, departing this world without any fucking message, without anything leaving behind a testament about my presence here. For what reason at least things went for the worst of the worst, yeah. That's all I wanted to say. That's, you know, that's that, uh, you know, Bronx, uh, Queens, they're rough, but, you know, I wouldn't say that they would kill me. They just, uh, how can I say, um, they just didn't. I mean, that's all there is to it. Uh, yeah, I saw uh, this guy, uh, I don't know what's his name, Tyson, I saw this, this is, this is basically the way it was, this stuff here that you see here, what you see here is basically is what I was. This is, this is pretty much, this is, this is, this is some kind of, uh, 
<laughs> a reminder basically of what it used to be I didn't want uh, I I didn't want uh, people from Bronx people from Queens to solve this case because of what went on beginning and they knew how much I resented them for the stuff that I'm not never gonna forgive them for this stuff so things turn for the worst of the worst with entire communities going in the White House and you know entire black community raising itself against me and so on yeah <laughs> This is this is a real this is real uh, Queens Bronx. Probably every one of these people knows me. Everybody, every one of these people saw me. But how many do they know me from the childhood? Probably everybody here that you see. That is of my age. That is older. Probably everybody. Probably everybody. I don't know if there was somebody that did not know me. Everybody knew me. Entire Queens, entire Bronx. Everybody knew me. Now, the police will disagree with this. Uh, this sounds like a really, really familiar area. This one here. This absolutely was one of these areas where I was delivered. Uh, you see... The thing about it is that they started to tell, yeah, but not all the buildings, you know, they, they were they were they were like kind of a delivering me to the certain locations where they had a sting. That's what they meant. That's what they wanted to say. Yeah. Now the truth is that they had me through entire Bronx and Queens and they had me in every fucking hall. And uh the truth is that uh, I don't even know how the hell they did it because those there are really fucking dangerous really 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 for the for the person that is a black person that looks normal uh, it's dangerous now of course everything is different nothing can be seen anymore this for me that you see here well, yeah, in back in the day, it was like this. Yeah. yeah, I actually know the stairways here. You see this here? This was one location right here. This. I put my brain to this. I. Uh, then I'm going to say to you like this, that this entrance here must have been built. Let me see that. Oh, this building here, this was a building. Uh, this was one of the stink buildings. I, I know by the entrance here. The entrance, I recognize the entrance to this place here. This was one of the locations, this was one of the buildings. Uh, let me see this here. This building, uh, however, it was the first two floors that went on. I don't understand that. This entrance mostly had to do with the first two floors, whatever went on. The first two floors were, uh, yeah. Some ladies were there, some black ladies that knew about this. And no, actually, this goes all the way up. It goes all the way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes all the way up. But this here this is the area where they would keep me busy right here the entrance here at this uh, stairs here and inside yeah i remember people when they would come home
this was a crazy stuff crazy stuff it was a little bit of everything just as i explained in previous videos a little bit of everything but not the way to spend life if uh, my child was in a situation like that i would have killed the police officers if they would get their hands on my child just one time uh, i would find a way to finish them off or be killed myself this was truly bestiality this is what a waste of brain life it's totally fucking unexplainable somebody who would have 10 degrees 10 doctorates and ended up life in you know how for me to express myself properly like a fucking brick in the wall I feel about United States of America citizenship I got truly just as I was told by the police by the Slovenian police that equals to the obituary paper when you're in a situation like mine and not paper but certificate that's how they want it me to see myself basically in it and it really looks like this my citizenship more or less the paper with the stuff i have spoken to you about in this video you don't get away from united states of america life i don't think there is any damn difference between donald trump and clinton's and you know in a way these are actors they do their their stuff and the one that experiences the most are the people they fuck oftentimes even their own voters if uh, at least somewhat give impression that something could be done different you know what i mean so Thanks for watching this video. It's not wrong, it's nothing wrong to come and visit me. Uh, it's nothing wrong to come to visit me, it's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but that's gotta be done in, in a way. Uh, I am, uh, for me personally, that, you know, I wasn't going to talk about this stuff, any of it. I, I wasn't going to get into it because of the stuff I stated you earlier in the, in the beginning of these videos. Maybe I was the most devoted American ever in the United States of America because this is so pathetic that you continue to rely on uh, at mercy of somebody that is struggling literally for life uh, right through your lies through your disgusting lies promises uh, and at the same time doing person such a disgusting stuff behind his back um, yeah you're gonna be trialed according to my words right now that's exactly what I'm using against you when it comes to accusations uh, but what I really wanted to say about this stuff is that if you if you come to visit me uh, basically you may want to let me know in advance uh, because I am more busy than politicians I am more busy than other people it might seem I am not I am doing all kinds of crazy stuff but my brain is on target I am driven I know where I'm going I know where I'm heading and it doesn't matter the wind 
nor waves, whatever it is, is not going to stop me from getting there. Um, I am busy right now, that is true. I am busy, I am coming to the end with this stuff. Uh, and I was hoping my entire life I'm not going to be compelled, forced into. Um, you drop me an email, you let me know, and we can coordinate that stuff. That's my pleasure to meet you. Now, that you would want to plunge in Slovenia uh, to me through some Slovenian politicians or something, or anyone in Slovenia for that matter, you can forget about it. Don't even think about it because it's not going to happen. Uh, I'm not saying anybody that if he comes to Slovenia to visit me, that he cannot stop by at whatever office in Slovenia. That's fine with me. That's completely fine with me. But that you go, according to the MK Ultra scenario, to this degree of abuse, it applies to Mr. William J. Burns, uh, and even with the bad intentions, really, according to MK Ultra scenario, you know, you would have done much better. You didn't do that. You, you, and your organization, Central Intelligence Agency, as was mine, you could even be spared. You will not be spared because of your advocacy for the murderers here from Slovenia, for one thing. And the second thing is, now you do share the blame for this. Now you do share the blame. If you came here to share the blame, just know one thing. I will meet you in America, and it's going to be for your worse.